Hey folks, it's time for yet another camera seal replacement, this time working on the Canon AE-1 program legendary camera on its own, but this little seal replacement is going to be a little bit different because I'm actually, drum roll, yes, believe it or not, going to sell this camera. It's part of quite a few things I'm getting rid of as far as my gear is concerned as I prep to get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah, I'm selling my house right now moving uh, into the Forerunner full-time Nomad. So, you know, not a lot of room. If you've watched any of my permanent light seal replacement videos before, you'll know that primarily I use two things, some cotton yarn and some self-adhering felt. Extremely cheap. This video will not be extremely in-depth. You can check out all my other videos on replacing light seals permanently. I have them on the F3 Nikon, the Olympus OM-1, Oh, the God, the Electro, a Canonet, I can't keep track of them all. But uh, today we're going to do the AE-1 program. Now, this will likely work for AE-1s, AE-1 program, and A1 Canon cameras. They're very similar cameras, of course, with some differences. But the light seals on this one uh, will probably be more or less interchangeable with the other cameras. Now, on the AE-1 program, you will have two, they're not necessarily light seals, but they're two little pads right here. I actually replaced those when I got this camera. And if we open them up, we're gonna have, of course, the top and bottom track seals. That's where we're gonna put our yarn. There are two right here at the door hinge. We're gonna replace those with felt. And if you can see really closely, there's already a felt one there. Of course, I generally don't replace the felt because they don't wear out. One of the reasons why I use felt for my own light seals. And there are some felt ones here. So we're not replacing these. We're not replacing this one. We're gonna put a piece of felt here and here. We're gonna put our yarn, top and bottom, and that's gonna be it for the AE-1 program. Now, like I said, I'm going to be selling this. Um, after I get done with the light seals, I'm just gonna clean them up a little bit. When I first got this camera, it was sold as not working. It said the shutter didn't work. It turns out the well, I won't go into it, but there's a little mechanism inside of here that makes the mirror flip up and down. That just needed a tiny bit of oil. I put a drop of typewriter oil on there. And as you can see, even the timer works. Everything on this camera works beautifully. Um, I will be including the original 50 millimeter, wait for it, 50 millimeter F1.8 program lens, as well as I think a 70 to 210 millimeter F4, maybe? I've only put one roll of film through this camera the entire time that I've had it. So if you are interested in getting a near pristine Canon AE-1, this is probably the time to do it. If you want to, just shoot me a message here on YouTube, uh, which can get kind of complicated. So if you want to reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or through my website, you can find all those links down at the bottom. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's get going with AE-1 program light seals. Something that I love about cameras such as this, uh, the Nikon F3 included, is that you can remove the door. It has a little little pin here, spring-loaded. You just pull down on that. comes off like so. Really simplifies the process. And we're going to get started by, of course, removing all this old adhesive and foam. The track light seals, we're going to do the same thing there. I would almost not replace these. There's still a good bit of foam in there. But I can see it starting to deteriorate. And whoever gets this camera, it's going to save you from having to have it sent off or put in light seals yourself because the ones I'm going to put in should never need replacing. Before I get going, I actually put this little eye cup on there. I'm going to pull him off. A little bit better access to the track. Now, as always, before we start putting any alcohol in here, start doing anything to the camera, I'm going to put a little piece of trusty painter's tape over the shutter curtain here. Be careful not to actually touch the shutter curtain with the tape, but that's gonna help prevent any trash, any of the old seals or alcohol getting down in here to the mirror box mechanism. You'll need a few Q-tips, of course. I use 99% isopropyl alcohol. This is something that you can more than likely get at your local store, especially your local drug store. Generally, I order mine because of where I live. We don't have well, much of anything at all, but you can likely get this locally. If not, I'll put a link down in the description uh, where I get mine from Amazon. We're gonna begin just by getting some of that isopropyl alcohol. 
down into the track to dissolve that old adhesive. Use a fair amount. Try to avoid not getting it inside the back of the camera as much as possible. But one of the reasons why we use the 99% isopropyl is because it will likely, well, so they say anyway, completely evaporate it without leaving residue. Whereas some more dilute grades of alcohol, you can find some residue on there. I know some people have used lighter fluid with these. I know people who use Everclear, uh, some very strong alcohol as far as liquor. I just like using the 99% isopropyl. Right, gonna hit the very side seal here. You can see that's already pulling off a lot of that old foam and old adhesive, which with this camera, that seal is non-existent. There's only the adhesive and a little bit of residue left. So we'll let that set and do its thing and move on to the single seal that we're going to replace on the door and that's right here at this hinge very compacted hardened foam and adhesive and that's that okay like i said we're gonna let the alcohol set do its business and we'll be right back all right so our alcohol has been working for i don't know two or three minutes now I'm going to use a highly specialized tool that you've seen me employ before standard issue toothpick Sometimes I use the ends of old incense that have burned off. The main thing, you want to try to use something that's not going to scrape your paint or scratch up the finish of your camera. I have, and may have to with this one, employed these little dental picks in the past. That is really good for getting in there and cleaning it out, uh, but it will generally scratch the paint which is not a huge deal because uh, we're going to be covering that up with our seals, but at the same time, generally I try to maintain the finish as much as possible. To begin, we're just going to take our toothpick or whatever tool you might be using and just go down in this track and scrape out that old seal, which looks kind of like that. I'm going to go around this and I already realized something. I forgot to put a paper towel down. Well, too late now. I'll just scrape this out and then clean up the old work area here in just a second. Be very careful on the AE1s, on the AE1 programs for that matter. This is your frame counter reset. And unlike some cameras, it really, really sticks up out of there, probably two, uh, maybe two or three millimeters. And when you're running your tool in there, be careful not to bend that or break it, God forbid, because uh, yeah, that'll make you have a bad day. A little pro gamer move I'll share with you if you decide to do this sort of thing yourself. A toothpick, broken, with the pointy end off, really helps to clean out the final remnant of that seal. Look how much that goop came out. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, we've got to get a paper towel. Oh, hey! <laughs> Where'd that paper towel come from? Yeah, it's magic. So we're just going to keep going around with the flat edge of the toothpick. Get out as much of that seal as we can. Now we'll hit it one more time with some 99% isopropyl to really help clean out all that loose debris. Yeah. Another little tip for you. Q-tip, tip, okay. Uh, depending on your camera, the tracks can be larger or smaller, that is wider or more narrow. If you're having trouble getting down in there, take a pair of pliers and just pinch the end of your Q-tip into a little musical note shape, I guess that would be, or maybe a lamppost shape. Pull it out a little bit if you want to. Yeah, there we go. I think you can see where this is going. And that's going to fit perfectly, or much better, that is, down into your track. Squeaky, squeaky. 
Okie dokie. That's got the track. I'm going to scrape off this little bit of foam and glue from the end. That's kind of tough. Yeah, I'm going to resaturate that with some alcohol and let it set for just a minute. And I think we'll probably have to break out the old dental tool for that one. And like I said, even though this is going to be covered by felt, I'm going to be really careful and try not to scrape up the paint as uh, well as little as possible. I'm here Leia getting upset because I'm not paying her enough attention for 30 minutes out of the day. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Well. Oh yeah, that's working much better. Saturate as we go. So that alcohol can penetrate that newly exposed adhesive. Squeaky clean. So the camera proper is cleaned out. Uh, that is the light seals are cleaned out. So real fast, let's get rid of this old seal from the door here. Oof, extra fucky gunky. For the track seals, folks, it absolutely could not be easier. I mentioned earlier, I use this 100% black cotton yarn. Now, I've said before in my other videos, folks, I am not a yarn expert, but I'll tell you what this is. It's three and a half ounce, 100 gram, 180 yards, 165 meters. And um, yeah, anybody that knows anything about yarn, you can interpret that, but um, this has worked for virtually every camera that I've used uh, these seals on. I got this for $3.79, and as you can see, this would probably make thousands upon thousands of permanent light seals. No adhesive required. We're just going to measure out the yarn, lay it in the track, trim it off, and then be extra special careful up top with our frame recounter here. Much like cleaning out the seals, uh, virtually any small tool you have can work. Personally, I still use my little dental tools here. You always want to have too much yarn than not enough. I'm just going to start at one side, get that seated, and then hold a little bit of pressure, pull that over, and then just tuck him down. Voila. Much the same with the rest of the track. I'm going to use our little tool and feed that along. Anybody could do this, folks. If you think you can, trust me, you can. The main things to watch out for is having a yarn that is too small or too big. Because if it's too small, of course, you're going to have maybe some gaps in your seal. Nobody wants that. If it's too big, it's going to be too much pressure. It could grab hold to the door, yank out your seals. And again, that's going to make you have a bad day. So that seal is seated. You can see him poking his little tail out right here from the end. Get him down in there. Take your scissors. These are not high grade scissors, by the way. Cut them off as snug as you can. Generally that will be fine. If there's too much, definitely don't want it hanging over the side. You can always pick it up just a little bit and trim it off. This yarn is so inexpensive, folks. I mean, you could afford to redo this every how many times. I think I'm actually going to do that. Pick him up just a little bit. Trim him. And seat. Perfect fit. We'll do the exact same thing for the top. I'm probably going to just lay this yarn all the way across that frame counter reset. 
because I think I can just spread the yarn apart and that's going to pop right back up and it won't be obstructed in any way. Now we've come to the frame counter reset. Just going to make sure that's sticking up through the yarn. Perfect. Hopefully you can see that little guy peeking up right there. Pay special attention around your frame counter of whatever camera you happen to be replacing these on. Make sure nothing gets down inside the camera. Make sure nothing is obstructing that because a lot of cameras, the doors actually have a little protrusion that articulates with a little plate in there. And let's say, depending on the camera, uh, you'll have to augment your yarn. Sometimes I just cut it and then pick it up again on the opposite side of the frame counter. And tuck. Lovely. Make sure he's seated. And the beautiful thing about seals such as this, guys, the more you use it, the more it's going to break in and form to the rim of the camera door. So it actually gets better over time. And for whatever reason, if it ever becomes dislodged, you can either just tuck it back down in there or just yank it out and put in another one because there is no adhesive whatsoever. So now that we've got our track seals replaced, we're gonna grab our self-adhering felt. More or less any felt will do, folks. Um, I like to use this cotton black felt. Again, it's self-adhering. This will stick right onto the camera, and most times, I mean, I'm sure that adhesive will eventually degrade. But with felt, it's not going to fall apart like foam. It's just not. Uh, that's why these door seals, they're felt, and I mentioned this a lot in the video, they're just fine. So that's what led me to use felt as much as possible. So use the old eyeball measurement here. Trim this off. And again, uh, much like the alcohol and the yarn, I'm sure you can get it locally somewhere. I'll link to similar stuff down in the description. I got this from Hobby Lobby. Where's it at? $2.49 US. So very cheap, two sheets again many uses for this. I actually just used it to add some little microphone windbreakers to my GoPro. So far, so good. But like I said, we're just going to cut out our felt roughly to shape and size. That feels pretty good. Like the yarn, cut a little bit more than you need because you can always trim them off. Do a little dry fitment here. Trim that just a tad. I think we're going to be in business. This has some paper backing. My big sausage fingers almost never can get off easily. And I like to expose just enough to get them started here. It's actually a little wide. It's a very narrow seal. I'm gonna trim that up some more. Watch your fingers. Try that again. But what I was saying was just peel off the end of your felt here, uh, expose the end of the adhesive, get that started right there, and then as you pull that paper backing will separate and just help you track that right on down where it needs to be. So we're still just a little long.
absolute beauty of a light cell, if I may say so myself. Much like the yarn. This will compact down when we get the door back on there and make a very secure seal for your camera. Isn't that just gorgeous? Beats that old foam. Gonna let that set up for just a second. And we're gonna do more or less the same thing with our door seal here. And I think, could it be? I think so. I think we're gonna use the little end, or excuse me, the other half of what we just trimmed off from the camera body seal. Waste not, even though when things are dirt cheap. I can't tell you how much being able to take the doors off your camera will really make your life a lot easier when you're doing things like this. A little bit of foam sticking around in here. Get out of there, foam. Okay. Now we can put in our field. Just like the camera body. Just gonna get them started. Grab our backing paper, pull, and track. Trim our excess. Beauty. As I said, folks, I'm actually going to go through, really clean this guy up before I send him to you. So don't worry, it's going to be a very clean camera, both inside and out. And uh, let's go ahead and put the door on there and test out these seals. More or less the reverse of how we took it off. Has a little spring-loaded guy right here. Put the little pin in at the bottom. Pull down on the spring. Snaps in place. Make sure everything's Hakuna Matata here with our seals. All right. It's probably gonna be just a little bit tight. Oh, that is gorgeous. What a seal. I'll articulate the door a couple of times, be sure there's not any snags. And uh, oh yeah, something I will mention, no matter the camera, uh, make sure that the door, this one's pretty good because those seals were actually uh, not horrible. Be sure there's not any adhesive or foam or anything sticking to the lip of the door here because that can snag snag that yarn and pull him right out of there. I think we're okay. As I said, the more you articulate it, the more you use the door, the more it's going to create a custom seal for your camera. All right, guys, we are done with these. As I said, I'm going to clean up this AE-1 program, put him up for sale along with the 50 millimeter F1.8 with the hood and cap and the 72 210 millimeter F4. I love the old slide barrel lenses that has a cap and the hood too. If I had to say, uh, this stuff is probably 90%, guys. Um, the camera itself has a little additional grip. I'm gonna include a battery in there as well. No strap, but it does come with the original leather case, which is in splendid shape all on its own. Uh, yeah, I've said I'm keeping the strap off this bad boy. Now, if you want to own this beautiful AE-1 program, they are fantastic cameras for anybody wanting to get into film photography. The reason for that being, the program, an AE-1 program, probably stands for exactly what you think. All you have to do, switch your lens to the A, put it to program, and you have what is virtually a completely automatic 
camera. Everything works in here, the light meter works. As far as I know, this camera works beautifully. At the end of this video, which is coming up here in just a few seconds, I'm gonna share some actual photographs made with this camera. I think I made them on Arista 100. I can't remember what the film was. But uh, yeah, if you want to have this, reach out to me, whichever way folks, and uh, we can talk about it. So yeah, thanks for being here guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions as always, put them down there in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks a lot, everybody.